Uh, this is a maintainer track talk about Cloud Custodian and where things are today. So to do a little bit of intro for people that may or may not be familiar with Cloud Custodian, uh, it's an open source project, Apache 2.0. It's a CNCF incubating project. Uh, and what it is, it's a rules engine for helping you manage your cloud accounts, uh, as well as being able to enforce those policies uh, on your IAC code before deployment. Um, so both runtime, shift right, and shift left. Um, it's a simple YAML DSL, uh, very declarative, very easy to read, where you write, you query a particular resource, you do some arbitrary set of filtering on that, and then you take a set of actions. It's sort of best in class at doing, actually fixing problems in terms of rem doing remediation. It supports doing real-time enforcement by integrating with the cloud providers, serverless, and event runtimes, um, so that as API calls are happening, you can introspect them and make sure that they're compliant to policy. Uh, it's a stateless tool, and uh, we support multiple providers, uh, most of the big public clouds, as well as Kubernetes, OpenStack, and Terraform, which we will go into in a minute. Um, it's used in production by thousands of companies. Um, uh, we, we even occasionally get uh, reach outs from the cloud providers before they do an incompatible update so that we don't, they don't break their own users. Um, and we've got about uh, about 1,200 people in the, in the custodian Slack and about 3,000 in the FinOps Cloud Custodian room as well. Uh, just to see what uh, some use cases are that people use this stuff for. Uh, Going to cover off on a couple categories. Uh, one that's been popular the last little while is something around is the FinOps use cases. So find the old things, take out the garbage on snapshots, on setting up life cycles on S3 buckets, on turning things off when not in use, on finding the underutilized uh, things and, and getting rid of them. So uh, super helpful for sort of cutting down on waste um, and uh, being more efficient about your cloud spend. Uh, security's always been one of the, the Cloud Custodian's core use cases, uh, and it allows you to uh, make, do all kinds of things from setting, making sure everything's encrypted um, with custom managed keys, uh, making sure that things are accessible from the network, that resources with embedded IAM policies um, are only accessible to the right audience. Um, and then, of course, being able to do incident response. And it ties into the, the cloud provider's native tools. So uh, this is all about being, you know, taking, being the easiest way to take advantage of those native capabilities, be that, um, AWS uh, Security Hub or Google Cloud Security Command Center, um, being able to take advantage of some of the native capabilities to, uh, to be able to uh, actually use them for enforcement and remediation purposes. So you, you might get a notification from guard duty that an instance has been popped and you might set it up to take a, you know, remove its IAM role, take a forensic snapshot um, and shut it down. Uh, and then operations use cases, which is sort of a grab bag for lots of different things. Um, you might do centralized logging, cross out of region backups, make sure that you're not getting cross AZ traffic on your, your NATs or your ASGs to your database. Um, lots of different use cases that pop up for operations as well. All right, so that's sort of a brief overview of custodians. So what's been going on? Um, I debated, so this is only since the, the last uh, state of the mop, which was at KubeCon in Amsterdam. Uh, I did look at the numbers for the full year since uh, since the lab KubeCon North America, and oddly, they're almost exactly you know it's exactly half. So we our pace has been pretty steady. Um, we've added in this year total, we've added four new maintainers, uh, but in this past six months, we've added two. They're actually both in APAC, um, so those are our first APAC maintainers. Um, it's pretty evenly spread. Um, we've had a lot of work being done on GCP and Azure in particular uh, this past quarter uh, or this past six months. Um, so there's, there's definitely been a lot of new resources. Uh, in general, this is pretty common for, for Custodian in terms of, you know, we're keeping up with the pace of innovation from the cloud provider. So a lot of sort of um, new things, uh, new resources, new filters, new action capabilities uh, that emerge from that. But a few that I wanted to highlight um, is two new cloud providers that we have. Uh, one of them is for OCI. Uh, it was contributed directly by, from, by Oracle. Um, it's still fairly early. Uh, this is the newest provider that was added. Um, and it currently is being used for 
things like some security use cases as well as some, uh, some off uh, cost FinOps use cases as well. Um, we're looking at supporting event-based policies for this. Um, I'd currently call it sort of, I don't know, alpha beta um, in terms of it's having the full capability set that we like to support across the providers. Uh, the other new provider is a Tencent uh, cloud uh, contributed by Tencent um, and it supports a, a, a fuller variety of things, including several databases, so network, reg container registries, object storage. Um, I can never actually figure out what the names are until you actually look at the docs, like what is cost. It's actually object storage, um, but I'll leave that aside. Uh, but this is also in use and uh, it is it does not also does not support event-based policies yet. Um, so I was actually at a FinOps uh, meetup yesterday and was talking to somebody who'd been using Custodian for years, and they're saying how they wanted to apply their policies uh, before the resources get deployed. I'm like, well, we've actually had that capability for a year. So I want to take a, a moment to to look at uh, some of our capabilities around shift left. Um, this is a brand new capability from roughly last uh, September. Um, and it, what it does is, and it's a little bit different than the standard custodian policies, it has a, its own CLI front end because um, it's really targeted towards being able to be applied, run those policies on a developer workstation, in your CI um, or, or, or CD. And in the context of, of being able to do it on, on a developer workstation, we want to have developer-friendly output. We, we're directly tagging the, the source lines that are non-compliant to a policy. Uh, in CI, we're actually focused on the code reviewers. Like, so we do direct annotation of pull requests so that the code reviewers can see exactly what, uh, what resources are flagging against which policy. Uh, and we'll, I'll go through a few slides on, on this in, in more detail. Um, but from a policy language perspective, it's, a, it's got a few more capabilities because we're operating entirely on an in-memory graph. So um, the example policy here uh, that's here is actually how do I write one policy for across multiple cloud providers that does enforces my tag standard? And that's what this is. So one policy, like in a regular custodian, we actually have to write a separate policy for each resource, but um, in shift left, we can do a generic policy for this use case across all resources, which I think is pretty cool. Um, we've added a, a few more things uh, in the last six months, um, being able to uh, do some of the tagging things here as well. Um, and we're looking at adding support for cloud formation and then the Serif security output. Uh, on the CI integrations, we currently support GitHub, GitLab, and Azure DevOps. Um, the latter two, uh, primarily via JUnit XML, although we all support uh, GitLab's uh, SAS security format if you're using the right edition of GitLab. Um, just get, give a quick feel for the flavor of what it looks like. Um, you just you run it. Uh, actually, I wonder if I want to take this, go, go a little bit wild and uh, do a live demo with no prep. Why not? What could go wrong? All right. So, so just taking a run. And so we can see, you know, we've run some real world Terraform. We, we ran a bunch of policies. Um, and it sort of lets us see on an individual resource basis, like exactly which lines are flagging. Um, and we can go look at it that way. Um, you can also do, if you're looking from like a more of a coverage semantic, you can do a separate summary instead of by policy, by resource and see, you know, which resources are being evaluated. All right, enough of that. Um, it, uh, and then as an example of sort of the integration with CI, uh, there's two, a couple of additional capabilities here. We, I mentioned the multi-policy resources. You can also do uh, we also have built-in policy testing. So there's a built-in uh, unit test runner here. Um, you basically provide examples of you know, uh, resources which should pass and resources which shouldn't, and you can write, and there's a simple assertion language. Um, we also support uh, doing arbitrary traversals. So um, any, any two resources that are connected um, that have a reference to each other, you can resolve that. Um, so you can go from like a security group to, sorry, from an EC2 instance 
to a security group, to a rule on that group, uh, and so do that arbitrary chaining to get from one edge to the other, uh, and then make assertions about the attributes on the final edge. All right, so, um, yep, we're gonna finish way, way on time, so. Um, I wanted to look at some of the provider roadmap. Uh, generally with Custodian, like, you know, we've had, I mean, both, I think all these providers have had at least 75 pull requests in the last year. Most, like, it, like I said, a lot of it's just keeping up with the capability set that's um, emerging from the cloud providers. In terms of looking at some uh, more generic capability sets, uh, on, in, on AWS, we've added another provider. Uh, it's a little bit different. It's called, we call it AWS CC. It's based on the Cloud Control API. Um, for us, what it primarily does is allows you to get full coverage across um, a wider set of resources than the ones that we've handwritten before. Um, and it has generic update, delete capabilities. Um, we wanted to, in keeping with the theme of being able to move some of this in shift left context, uh, we also want to add support for CloudFormation as uh, an event-based execution mode. Um, and it's not really, it, it's, it's primarily a CD enforcement technique. Uh, it doesn't apply to you know, pre-commit or pre-merge, but uh, it's still very helpful for being able to uh, catch things before they're deployed. Uh, and, then event, and then also add the event modes for post-deployment post runtime immediate detection. Uh, and then looking at trying to provide additional IAM identification capabilities generically across uh, IAM entities uh, using Access Analyzer. Uh, and then a common request has been being able to tag resources from the resources own attribute. Um, and so that's something we're also looking at. For GCP, um, originally when the provider was written, uh, most of the GCP APIs were effectively global. So we went with that there. Uh, we are starting, much, many of the newer GCP APIs uh, are primarily regionally targeted. And so we're trying to retrofit that support in. Uh, should be backwards compatible. Um, we'll, we'll default to looking at all regions uh, if a region's not provided, but uh, we will now start respecting the region flag when passed on GCP policy sets. Um, Azure, continuing to look at how we can slim the Azure SDK down. Um, this has been an ongoing thread with the Azure team uh, for a few years. Um, the Azure SDK uh, for all the APIs we use is well over a gig at this point because it's mostly generated stuff um, and trying to see how we can get that to something that's reasonable. It tends to bloat our Docker images um, as one thing in particular. Um, and then having the ability to copy re uh, tags from like a subscription or a resource group down to the underlying resource. Uh, on the release engineering, we've made a strong effort on fully automating the releases. Uh, our goals like cell cell level three, like no humans in the loop, um, and then just have a release go out um, on a regular cadence automatically, um, assuming no blocking issues. Um, we were mostly all the way there. Release artifacts are now built fully in CI, inclu inclusive of unit and functional tests. Um, and we had originally started experimenting with uh, the Wolfie and ChainGuard images, but um, uh, there was a, they started commercializing the registry. So uh, Wolfie itself is open source. So we're waiting for the Wolfie base images to be available from a public uh, non-commercial registry before we do that. And then finally, we, we started working on our graduation process. Like I said, Custodian is used by thousands of organizations, has 400 plus contributors. Um, you know, it's, it's time to start moving to the next step uh, on the CNCF process. Uh, we have just completed our security review um, with a third party audit and uh, starting to do uh, reviews, uh, a review of the audit results uh, starting next week. Um, so hopeful to get that done yeah, I'll be optimistic and say maybe summer next year. And that's all I had. Um, and I'm happy to take questions or we can continue on to the pub crawl. Sorry, the cube, what is it called? The expo hall crawl thing. Any questions? Uh, there's a mic in the middle of the room. Or you can just stand up and use a loud voice. Take your pick. Um, is custodian supported do you use uh, event-driven for GCP? It does. I've, I've used it in AWS in, in a Lambda. What, could, could you describe how that works in GCP a little bit? Uh, sure. In GCP, um, we, I forgot what it's called, Stack Driver? No, I think they've renamed it. Uh, effectively, there's an API audit log in GCP that gets relayed through PubSub 
to a, a GCP cloud function. So we effectively, in, in the same way that you do it in AWS, you write a policy, you do custodian run, it provisions all the event sources and the serverless functions for you behind the scenes. So do you have and, to send your boss to HubSpot then? Nope, we, we do, it's all taken care of for you. You basically just run it. Um, it basically just creates, it creates the log sync, the, it creates the log sync and the forwarder to the pub subtopic and the function. It, so those are the three pieces that get created. And the P99 on it, it's, it's a, and GCP is like, it's milliseconds. Um, it, it, I mean, it's fast. Um, Same question for Azure. So for Azure, um, I believe we use uh, Event Hub. Uh, I used to have a slide for this um, on the intro deck. Uh, we use Event Hub and Azure uh, Functions, um, and we hook them up. Azure Functions are a little, they're a little bit different than other serverless runtime environments, um, let's say, because uh, th they're based on top of web apps. But uh, effectively, same general concept. You write the policy, we provision the event sources and the function for you. I think it's going, I think we're going off of ARM resource logs in that context. Um, and then of course, in all providers, like all for AWS, Azure, and GCP, we also support multiple ways of getting the data from uh, getting and querying the cloud resources, both through the native service, as well as the respective cloud providers, um, third-party stores, so AWS config, um, Azure resource graph, uh, GCP cloud asset inventory. Go for it. Uh, so that in cloud, in IAC, because we have the whole graph in memory, we can do arbitrary traversals with like zero cost. So in cloud providers, we don't do arbitrary traversals. We typically have implemented hops um, where you can go from, uh, we call them related filters, where you can go from say an instance <coughs> to its IAM role or an instance to its security group or subnet. So for the cloud, for the cloud providers' resources, uh, we have that capability, but it's expressed on a one-off. It's expressed as on an implementation basis for each hop. But I guess you could do it for like AWS config gives you that whole graph. It doesn't. I mean, it has some elements. It doesn't. It's not really comprehensive um, in many ways. And. It has some things. It doesn't, it's not fully comprehensive, like uh, KMS keys, especially on newer resources, like even config's ability to do like select resources is inconsistent across the resources that they have. There's a partial subset of resources that they do it for. So it's not very consistent, which is why we also implement, uh, we, we've chosen to implement that directly. All right. So that's it. Then I bid you all a happy KubeCon. Take care.